In this video, we're gonna be installing some gear reduction on my 19 Polaris Turbo Razor. Right there. I'm gonna go over basically the install and I'm gonna show you some things that I learned and some tricks that'll make it a little easier for you. While we're out here today riding, after you know I got the install, I'll have the part numbers and the gear reduction, like the percentage that I went in this one, down in the description. But I'm gonna give you a kind of like a high speed run in low, just to give you real world, after I've done the reduction, how fast it'll go. And the speedometer is gonna read the same as everybody else's. It's not gonna matter what size tires you got. I've already gone and I've already gone ahead and removed the cover, the belt cover, and taken off the belt because I'm sure you've seen that. I've also got the axles out and all the control arms and everything. If, you, uh, if you're if you not real comfortable with taking the axles and the belt and the belt cover off, you might not want to get involved in changing the gears out in the transmission. So 18 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and take these off. Once you get the bolts loose, remove this one and this one. On the secondary there's a couple washers so be careful not to lose either of these. Secondary is going to come off fairly easy. When you're taking when you're taking the primary off you need a special tool. I'll put a link to this one down in the description. This. Thread this in, hit it with the impact, take the primary off. Once this comes loose, remove the primary. So once you've taken your primary off and your secondary off, you got three T45 Torx head that need to come off. You got these two bolts that go all the way through. These are 16 millimeter heads. This one and this one are 15 millimeter and they also go all the way through. This is where you're going to need two people. It's going to make it a lot easier. One person to hold on this side or turn on this side and another person over there. This one and this one is going to be a 18 millimeter nut on the other side. This one and this one are both 15 and all of them are fairly easy to get to except this one. And I'm going to do my best to show you how I done it on the other side. What you're going to need is a 15 millimeter crow's foot and a lot of extension. Makes it way easier. So this is what it's going to look like on the other side. This one right here is one of the larger 16 millimeter on the, on the back side on the plate. Here's the other one right there. There's one that is up behind here there it is. You kind of see where I'm pointing at. That's a 15. That's fairly easy to get to. The one that's tough though is, let's see, see if you can see where my fingers pointing right back there. And I mean way back there. That's where you need that crow's foot and long extension just to hold it so that you can take it off. That's the toughest thing I've run across so far and it's not too bad when you got that crow's foot. Alright, another thing to note is this wire loom pushes in just some little push pins kind of thing, goes into these holes. You gotta take the wire loom off before you take this back and plate off. I've also noticed that I got my drive shaft still bolted up to the transmission. Once I take this plate off, it's gonna make a lot more room and a lot easier to do that. I'll just have to remember to put that on before I put this back, once I go back together. And I'm really not even sure if that's gonna be the best play because once all this is loose, that might be kinda of loose. So I'll let you know how that works. It might be better to take that off first before I do all this. I'm just trying to save some time. But <clears throat> one other thing that you might wanna do is underneath the transmission, once you take all these bolts loose, the transmission is actually like the rear motor mount. So once you take this loose, the motor's gonna wanna slide and fall down. To make it a little easier, I'm gonna try to find a block of wood to put between the pan 
and the engine just to hold it up a little bit for when everything goes back together and it doesn't just fall completely out of alignment when I take all these bolts out. So I've taken the backing plate for the uh, belt cover and all the bolts off the other side. You can see right here how everything doesn't line up anymore. That's what's holding the motor and transmission alignment together. On this side we just got a few connections. Got a connection here. Right behind it, right there, is where I'm going to take off the vent tube for the transmission. We're going to take this loose, take this loose. Got a couple, like I said, another wire connection here and one, it's hard to see, back there. Once we get those loose, right here, right there is the actual rear mount. So I'm going to take both sides of that plate off from the other side, probably be a little easier, but once we get that loose, pretty much just gonna be taking the transmission out. And you can see, while I was taking the axles out, this one didn't wanna be, it didn't wanna play nice, so I just left it in. It'd be easier to get out once I take the transmission out. So I noticed this right here does not need to be unplugged. It was just pushed in to that little hole right there. So you just have to take that out. And another thing, when you move that out of the way, this vent tube, right, the vent tube that's right there, right there. Instead of taking this off, because that thing is super long, it goes way up in there. Instead of taking it off, let me show you where it goes on the other side. And you can actually just, it's easier to take it off there and fish it all the way back through. So I started tracing it, and this tube right here actually goes up through there and you can just take it off right here. Take all, take all these little things off right here and just fish it back through. It's gonna be a lot easier that way instead of fighting, taking it off the vent tube on that side. So we got an X marked right there and I think this just comes, this part just comes out. Look at there, come right Here's our makeshift. I think that's the one we're swapping, is it? That gear. I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we're ready to put it back on then? Hmm. No, we can just leave that out because we're going on a new shaft. I'm going to put that one. Put that one on. All right. Yeah, there you go. Like we'll that. take this one out. And then this roller bearings that go in it. Might want to put them in it first. I hope none of them come out. Me too. And then that's the one that's on. That's the gear that's on the shaft. Yep. Like that. You want to go ahead and just stick these back on it? On this one. Okay. So that we don't. Okay. So this comes out like this. This comes out like this. All right, when you're putting the snap rings on, it's very important to note not to open them any farther than you have to to slide it over the shaft. Yeah, everybody talks about them snap rings being like the devil. Yeah. You've done more than they have? Probably. I mean, and it and it could be a different one. Oh. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna continue. How many on. of those guys have been a mechanic for forty years? Most of those years. guys are probably younger than me. Okay. Just, I've probably been a just mechanic say. longer <laughs> than they've been alive. Yeah, yeah. Most of them. And then that, and then back to the press. Back to the press. So we're just putting each side one side at a time so there's no confusion. Yeah. So take it off, spin it, put it on there. More snap rings. <clears throat> 
we tried to be real careful and take the pieces off and put them on this little extension that we made to hold them in the same order and the same direction as they came off so we can put them back the right way and not get any pieces mixed up and while I'm at it big thanks to my dad he helps me out all the time that comes off more, more of those I'm just going to put it to the side instead of sticking it down in there another one of those I think this was the one that guy was talking about the snap rings being just so many of them, I guess. The whole transmission is held together with snap rings. Just wondering if we should have cleaned all that, sprayed it out. Oh, is it this one? This one. Wait, we didn't put the uh, there in the snap ring yet. Mm -mm. Okay. Right there, and then and then a snap ring or a washer. a washer and a snap ring. When you're blind, you need a real good light. And that. And then snap ring. That's the one that moves. See, the snap ring only goes down to here. Mm -hmm. So that can... Mm -hmm. I knew there was one of them that did that. Too far. Now there's the washer. And this thing. Like that. Make sure everything everything's in there lined up right. Another washer. So the washers go where all the roller, the bearing things are. You know and it looks I don't know if anybody knows but all the paint it's on always the on the top all the ones I didn't pay any attention but paints on top last one <coughs> that's it so this this piece here the shifter mechanism is kind of a pain they say to make sure it's in high which gives you more room on this slot the one thing that helped us was moving these forks because it's just spring up and down and kind of bringing this in from the side just kind of got to play with it and the gear is all the same thing you just kind of got to shift them around and play with them before they'll go in right but I didn't feel like showing everybody the pressing on bearings pushing on the bearings the gears that's it okay one thing when you're putting these back together all of these are splined one way it's got one big keyway so the gears only go in one way but you see those little tick marks on the gears this one's got one on the piece that sticks out and it goes in between these two 
So make sure you get those lined up when you're putting it all back together. The rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. So that's how they look when everything's together. Where the spring is, where that little arm is, just in case all of it flies apart when you take yours apart. That's what it looks like going back. Okay, for a few people that wanted to see how the alignment goes, all of these bolts are still loose. These right here, I haven't even put nuts. I mean, you see, I haven't even put the nuts on them, but there's an alignment tool to get this spacing right and the alignment right, but let me show you how much movement. I mean, that's with a pry bar and it really don't even have a lot of movement. So I'm gonna do like a few of my friends did and just tighten everything down. Now this one does have the aluminum backing plate behind the uh, clutch cover and all, but I'm not gonna say that you don't need to align these. I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna do it without it. And if I have any problems, I'll let you know. All right, so I can see a zero right there. So I don't know if you could tell, but I still have the governor on mine in low, so it cuts out at 30 mile an hour, and I get to 30 mile an hour pretty easy, and I still got a little bit left. Not a whole lot, but for anybody that's curious, I can still get to 30 mile an hour with the 50% reduction, or 52, or 48, or whatever they want to call it. It's the Ranger low gear set, and the Ace 325 gears also, as low as I could get it. I love it. It makes everything so much easier. You can drive the razor. You don't have to. You're not stalling so much. It's not that it never had enough power, but you can grow. You can go slower, easier. And when my kids are driving too, it's a super plus because they can drive a little bit and not bounce into trees and rocks too much. But hope this helps. Hope it gave you some of the answers that you needed. I. I tried to do my best to answer the questions that I couldn't find any answers to. So like I said, I have the part numbers to the stuff that I put in the transmission down in the description. See you guys on the next one.